Hey friends, I'm back with another video. And this one's going to be about how I play a cleric. Now, I figured the best way to do this is to more or less solo the cleric. But of course, clerics are terrible completely alone. So I will have a warrior mercenary with me. So cleric is a support class. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. And you can't really solo with the cleric. That being said, if you have access to mercenaries, you can survive playing just the cleric with that mercenary. And I'm here to more or less show you how I would play a cleric. And if I think clerics are good especially on a TLP, and just try to show you what some of the spells do. This is more if you're new and you've never played one, or you just never played a cleric before, and even though you might have played EQ for a while, clerics might be just a mystery. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in your head. I just know what's going on in mine, although that's kind of vague too. So here we go. We're going to go to the deep because we might as well go and do something productive. And the deep is where we uh, where we have a task today. So we're going to hit up the nexus over here. From the nexus, you pretty much just go straight down and straight across. We're headed to Shadow Haven, which is a Looseland zone. Well, so is the Nexus, but shh, I don't, I won't tell if you don't. All right. So you land, you turn to the right, you go here, down this corridor, past these gnomes. A lot of gnomes here and halflings. I don't know. They're all short people. They all look alike. Dwarves. I guess this is like just a short side of town. Or All right. And then we go through here, make a left. And I think this is the zone line here. Yep. All right. Just follow the corridor down. I'll show you the map here. So that's where we zoned in on Shadow Haven. And you pretty much just take a straight shot through here. There's not a whole lot that can hurt you. There's a few bugs, but I think if you stay to the right, they're not going to really bug you much. <laughs> bugs bug you. And then, see, so keep going till, till the end here. You can't go anymore. You bank to the left. Pretty much just following the wall you know and there it is the deep so one thing i do if i haven't played a character in a little while is i delete some of the spells and i, I want to make absolutely sure that i've got the highest level spells so i'm going to make sure i got my highest level nuke i'm going to make sure i got the highest level pet yes clerics get pets folks i don't know how many of you remember that but they do i don't know when they were released it wasn't in original everquest they don't get pets per se like a mage does or a necromancer. They don't summon them and have them follow you around everywhere. These pets are more like a dot. I can summon a hammer and the hammer will sit there and fight with me until the monster is dead and then it goes away. So every time a new monster shows up, you're in a new fight, you summon a new one. So it kind of just acts a lot like a dot. It's got like maybe a hundred hit points. So if it gets hit a couple of times, it's gone. You're going to need to do this with having your tank or yourself tank. So this is just like having a weapon in your offhand, more or less. I think I'm going to make sure I got root memorized. Going to make sure I've got the absolute strongest heal memorized. Going to make sure I got a duration heal. And I might even grab a group heal because that's always a good idea. Let's make sure I've got the highest level Yelp. Yelp is, you know, that site where you leave reviews for, for stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Yelp, Yelp is just uh, an attack buff for yourself in case you do end up attacking things. Here's uh, protection of Vi. It's just supposed to give you extra um, melee protection and it's always a good idea to hit put that on your tank. Uh, spell focus is always a good idea too. It's a buff you can cast on yourself. Makes it to where you cast your spells a little faster I think. And there was something else I wanted. Right, I wanted to have a gate spell just in case uh, for, you know, just complete emergencies. Oh, here's another thing. I always make sure if I have any kind of benefit that's going to help me out, I use it. And this is that little pet earring, the uh, spore earring that gives you a little mushroom buddy and he gives you a regeneration buff. So I'll get a little bit of extra hit points. Another thing that I actually have, which not a whole lot of clerics might run around using is poison. I mean, unfortunately this poison is level 30. Let's see if I have something better. You got anything stronger? Well, this one's level 40. So let me, let me grab that one. I think that might be the strongest that I have currently. Yep. So, hey, it might proc. I don't know. So we'll have that ready. Uh, here's another buff too. It gives me, I think, poison and disease. Uh, it's just, oh, just poison. Okay. 
by 25. Hey, he's a rare creature right off the bat, man. <laughs> off the bat, man. So I'm going to set myself to main assist. I'm going to set the tank as main tank. This means that the tank is going to take a lot more of the damage than I'm taking. And uh, I shouldn't have to worry nearly as much about getting hit as long as the tank does its job. And I'm going to try to stay behind the mobs because I don't know if you know, if you attack from behind, you don't really so much as get any kind of bonus, but you do avoid uh, the monster's defenses. Like if they can counterattack or repost or uh, things like that or parry, well, they can't do that from behind. So you avoid those things. So the chances of you getting counterattacked are very slim. Oh, and there's the pet window. As I said, there's a, a pet and it will keep attacking until the thing is dead and then and it died. So now I have to summon a new one. And that's what it is. You see, it's just a, a magical hammer, similar, kind of similar to an enchanter pet, except the enchanter pet does actually stay around the whole time. Whereas mine just, see, it just dies after a fight. Hey, what did that named guy drop? Okay, I guess he didn't really drop anything interesting or anything good. Oh, right. Okay, I'm 54. I don't think I have any kind of AA gate. No, I don't. But I tell you what I do want is to have my pacify spell ready because that is a spell that I can use to calm things and usually only get one monster attacking. So that's what you do. You pacify one and then you try to get the other one. I can try to pull with a with a spell by blasting it. And there we go. Now I'm still kind of close to that other monster. There's a chance that it might uh, attack. Oh crap. There we go. What the hell is this? Don't need it. Okay, and we're getting attacked by another mushroom. And I'm going to try to... Hey, since when can I actually command these things? That's funny. It, it, it has the commands. It shouldn't have any commands at all. It should be just like an enchanter pet. All right, so here we got two things right there, okay? Oh, wow, look, I got to 55 now, so I did get a new spell slot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my attack buff to the bottom and here I'm going to have a gate spell because it's always nice until you get the AA ability for gate. Oh look I got the AA ability. I was just talking about that. All right so don't need the gate. Ward of the divine. I wonder what the hell that is. I don't even know. Okay I didn't know I had something. Places a ward of retribution around your body. Uh, periodically strikes out at creatures that attack you. And fade after 120 strikes. You know, this is how long it's been since I played a cleric. Like, really just played one that I forget what things are. So... I'm going to go over some of that stuff right now, actually. Um, and of course, like I said, this cleric is now 55, but I want to cover like everything from like level one to about level 60, right? The basics. You already know that if you right click on a spell, if there's a spell there, it removes it. But if you right click on an empty gem, you get this handy little menu and then you can go to the different subjects. So I want a direct damage spell. So I go to direct damage, go to magic. Of course, I always want to use my highest level one. You may ask, what are these in blue? The ones in blue are area effect spells. They're direct damage spells. They will harm everything surrounding you. So if you've got two or three monsters all hitting you at once, this is the spell to use. However, it's also going to really piss those monsters off. So it, uh, I, I prefer the single target spells because sometimes uh, it's better to just try to fight one thing at a time. I already mentioned this being a pet spell. Level, you get it at level 54, and if I remove it and go to pets, you'll see 54 is the only one I have. So you don't have a pet until 54. That's like the lowest level. If you go down to detrimental spells and you look here to root at from level 7, you get the spell called root. 27, you get instill, and then at 46, you get immobilized. I just basically call all root spells root just because it's just easier everybody knows what that means. If somebody says root the mob, well, you're not going to like delete your immobilize spell and get the root spell. It's all the same thing. The immobilize spell is just a better, stronger version of root. So yes, use immobilize. Healing spells are cleric's bread and butter. That is your job. That is what you do. So you will often be asked to be the primary healer 
of any group that you join. So you can right click on an empty gem, go down to heals over here, and there are cure spells. These can cure curses, eradicate poison, pure blood, that is another one that probably does both uh, disease and poison. Abolish poison, remove curse, counteract disease. So they're all spells that remove uh, effects. Like if you've been diseased, you can cure the disease. If you've been poisoned, you can cure the poison. Uh, blindness, if you've been blinded, you can cure blindness. However, this is more for like curing someone else's blindness because if you've been blinded, you're not going to be able to see your spell gems to cast the right spell unless you have it already memorized because you know a monster might blind you and you memorize what spell gem that is and then you can just cast it by hitting alt and the number key that corresponds to cure blindness or whatever uh, because when you are when your character gets blinded your screen goes black you can't see anything and there's duration heals these are healing over time spells and you you get your first one at level 19 uh, the one i have now is a level 44 one and uh healing over time spells will just heal you know maybe 50 hit points every six seconds for a total of you know 20 seconds or something like that you know it's it's just whatever whatever the spell says and in healing you get your first healing spell at level one minor healing at four you get light healing at 10 you get healing then at 20 you get greater healing and it's always good to use your strongest healing spell because your group's going to need it and like i said these ones here highlighted in purple those are area healing spells like so any player character that is within a couple of feet of you will get healed if you cast that healing spell including yourself so those group healings they heal everybody in the group as long as they're near you they can't be too far away and then we got single target healing spells those are you know probably the most effective ones um, so again this is a heal over time this is a group one and then we got pacify pacify is a really nice thing to have there it the line of spells is called calm because that's what you're doing you're calming the monsters so they don't attack if you attack one of their friends the first one you get at level one is called lull and you get soothe then at 15 you get calm 36 you get pacify and pacify is the only spell you have i think until like level 60 which is kind of messed up because this is a very useful and important spell in the highest level thing that i can pacify is level 55 so this we covered this is sort of like a a a thing that triggers anytime some monster hits you and it's already worn off so it doesn't last very long and this thing yelp is like a, a buff that you cast that only lasts a few seconds and it improves your attack rating so when we put it all together let's try i'm going to try pacifying this thing over here so it doesn't attack okay and you see it it got pacified then you have to wait for it to recharge and hit it again on this other one see it's pacified that's how you know it worked because you'll see the buff there and then we want to attack this one over here that's standing alone there we go he's coming at me and i'm going to recast that that buff that attacks monsters that attack me and i'm also going to attack now a cleric can also use a couple of combat skills um may, may mostly just one though uh they can bash they can bash with their shield which is also very nice and, and everybody can bind wounds so if you have a shield equipped which you should i mean if you're if you're if you're uh running around wanting to fight stuff so here you go i'm pacifying something i'm attacking with um one of my spells here and this is mostly because i'm fighting solo and i really kind of uh have nice decently nice gear right now so i can do this there's a lot of times where you won't be able to do anything except for sit down and you only get up to heal things or heal your party and i'll show you kind of how that works so let's go over here and bash this guy okay there we go he's he's bashing him so in the game uh a lot of times you can run out of mana so let's say if i was almost out of mana i mean i'm full right now but if i was almost out i would have to sit down like this to meditate and get my mana back faster so i let whoever my tank is um he's he's doing all the fighting while i sit here and wait to 
and I watch his health like a hawk. And if his health goes below a certain level, I want to give him a heal. So let's say the fight's still going on. I would get up, I would heal him with divine light, and then I would just sit my ass back down. And there's an old um, macro that I would do for this particular uh, thing. I'm actually going to open up a new uh, hot bar and I'm just going to show you sort of the old school way of doing healing. Um, and I would make up uh, a spell that said heal, color it green because green is usually good or maybe light blue or something. I would say uh, slash um, G for group. I would say healing Percent T. Percent T is a placeholder for a target. So right now I'm targeting him. So if I hit this button and it talks in group, it'll say um, healing uh, Falmumbus or Fal Falumbus. Okay. And then I hit space. You could put something cheeky like this healing, you know, healing target, healing Falumbus. Please stay close or you might die. Okay, so that's that's just a group uh, chat command. And then I want to put the command to cast a spell. Now, most of the time on EverQuest, especially live EQ, you don't have to stand up anymore. But if you were playing on a project server, you might have to put a uh, slash pause to comma slash stand, right? A command for you to stand up, then slash pause 30 i don't know we'll say 38 for the cast time of the spell for healing damn i'm good it's uh, it's about uh almost 38 it's 37 so really i should put more like 40 just it's always good to put a little extra time uh pause 40 comma slash cast and the number of the uh spell we're casting which is four for divine light cast four and uh so, since these are two commands you always want a comma in between so pause 40 is sort of a sleep timer and that tells is it says a command that says wait 40 ticks uh to to do the next command after casting a uh, spell slot four which is this here and then i might type on type here and say slash sit so i get up i cast a spell and i sit right after so let's see how that looks we, we finished uh, we'll put it right here and i cast a spell here's the group chat and see i said healing phalambus please stay close or you might die and as soon as i cast a spell i sit back down automatically so i'll try it again and this was a hot key that i used to do when i was in a group uh, either as a shaman at any time I was any kind of priest that was a healer this was kind of my thing I sat and I pressed a single button now sometimes because you were sitting down and you just healed somebody you might catch aggro you might get some monster attacking you because you healed this is a great example right here because we've got two of these fighting the tank now we got three fighting the tank so watch what happens if I sit down and then I use my heal button, I'm probably going to get attacked when I sit back down. Well, that's a freaking miracle. <laughs> the uh, the tank is just doing a really phenomenal job at keeping these guys uh, occupied. So when your mana is about full, you can always get up and attack and join the fight. You don't have to sit there sad and lonely and all pathetic. <laughs> you know, not able to attack. That's just something you kind of have to do if you're low on mana and your group counts on you to keep them healthy, keep them alive. Now, I have this other strategy where if I don't have to really do a lot of damage, I will remove my best nuke, my best direct damage uh, spell, and I'll go down and get the lowest level direct damage spell, like strike one. And this spell casts a lot faster as you see much faster than the other one it does a lot less damage too which can be beneficial uh i've i recently realized that if you do too much damage when you when you pull something uh then if that monster has the ability to summon you summon the player it will summon you so it's beneficial to have spells that do little to no damage just to pull something towards you another reason to want to do 
as little damage as possible is the more damage you do the the higher the chance of getting the other monsters near them uh, to help out to attack so if you do very little damage you might your attack will go unnoticed so I, I pacified three of them over there so I'm going to use my spell here and I'm I've set my merc to passive because I don't want him attacking oh we we pulled two okay because there was I must have missed one of them so so doing small damage or or low damage when pulling can be very helpful uh, so as you see we only got two we might have gotten more because sometimes even after you pacify something other things will still try to attack because they're dicks that way they don't want to cooperate uh, if you're wondering what kind of hammer i'm using right now i'm using this intricate hammer uh, he's trying to run away i can try to root him up oh, never mind he got killed intricate hammer this is made by players using smithing and a little bit of tailoring and I think even some jewel crafting to make these augments if I'm right I, yeah I think these are made in jewel crafting but I could be wrong um I think but I think they are I think at least I make mine in jewel crafting but it's not a bad little hammer it does 19 damage 25 delay it gives me some armor class some hit points and mana uh, it has a little bit of attack rating and hit point and some mana regen i can't ask for a whole lot more at level 51 to 60. i mean look at look at the shield i'm wearing i'm still wearing a simple consigned wooden shield i definitely could use a better shield my range item is still this little 10 percent haste orb i got from the tutorial i did upgrade my jewelry though so there we go and I have my old jewelry on me and I was gonna say hey folks if you're making a new character here on Throne of I let me know if you need some jewelry I could always give you Yara's old jewelry um, although these are not the stats you would get so let me put one of these things on so you would see exactly what the stats are you would get 5 AC 127 hit points 127 mana 5 to strength wisdom uh, stamina agility dex and 5 to your saves I don't know why it shows those other stats, but you're limited to these stats, okay? Um, but they're still nice because you get these for each piece of the jewelry at level one. So I've got the uh, upgraded version. I've got the Valium Trio, and I got 15 AC, 381 hit points, mana endurance, 15 to each of these stats, 15 to each of these saves, and that's on you know each of these separate pieces of jewelry so it all adds up so again we're gonna do this i'm gonna pacify these guys and this is a lot of times like if i got a pull usually if you're in a group there's gonna be someone else that's gonna pull you're gonna just sit back and heal but since you can pacify you can do a little crowd control action and pull and that way you're only getting one at a time i mean they're light blue to me, to me at the moment so um and if you have the man of despair you can jump in and uh attack and do some damage too hey look my poison triggered i did 742 poison damage and it triggered again so it triggered twice during that fight that is pretty sweet so again i'm gonna pacify and then i'm gonna pull this guy using strike which is a level one spell it does very little damage just does 10 points of damage but that's kind of good because it means the attack gets less noticed and if i'm wrong about this feel free to say something okay but when i'm pulling even at high le especially at higher levels level 80 and stuff 85 i noticed that when i pull using a zero damage or low damage uh spell or something i get a lot less ads so i'm pretty sure i'm right about it but if if you feel like you've got a difference in opinion um, I'm willing to listen but again uh, if, if you're wondering how do, how am I using poison this is a uh, spider's bite this poison is made by rogues and it is a poison that rogues can make to give to anybody or sell in the bazaar and anyone can use it I mean even a priest or a caster can use it uh, are they supposed to like is is my deity of Vishan gonna be annoyed probably not because Vishan's dude he's a dragon he probably doesn't care how I vanquish my foes but I don't know if Tunar would be so indifferent to a Tunar priest using poison but that's that's just that's just RP that's just role play silliness there so nothing will ever happen to your character if you're a priest and using poison so you may as well take advantage you know uh, a paladin for example in reality wouldn't be caught 
dead using something like poison. Poison is beneath them, but my paladins always use poison if I have some. I'm more interested in staying alive than I am with the uh, the roleplay aspect of the game. Oh wait, is this... He's a name? Is he a, is he a name? He is, but he's already passed. Screw it. Screw it. Let's risk it all. Let's have a big adventure. I think I think it's it's only uh, four. I think we'll survive. I want to see what this one has. <laughs> okay, he's almost dead. My mercenary uh, tank is doing a great job. Gnome tanks are pretty good. All right, we killed him. Now, what did he... Did he drop anything good that I'm not noticing? I don't think he dropped like a single like rare named thing. So I don't know. Are these guys like not dropping normal loot? I don't know. But my guy took a little bit of damage so I can uh, try to heal him a little bit. This is the heal over time spell. Oh, I wasn't targeting him. That's important. You always want to target your guy when you're healing him. I can also do group heal. Show you what it looks like. There you go. And again, you can bash during a fight. Uh, you know, I can call my pets. And a lot of time during fights, you are sitting down. Like if we had a full group or at least two or three others in the group, one might be running out and pulling monsters to the group. The other one might be tanking. And my job would be to keep everybody alive. You know, I would use the target window and target who I need to. So like I target him and then I hit my heal button here that I made for myself that talks in group and says, you know, stay close because I'm healing you. And then oh, if he needs another heal, I hit it again. And, it, you know, it'll tell him where if I have to target another group member, I would go down the list and target each one to heal them. Or if everybody in the group is hurt, then you do the group heal, the, the, the large AOE heal. Finally, there's always the chance that one of your uh, group members might die. So if that happens, you actually have the ability to bring them back to life. Sure, when we die, we respawn, but you're going to respawn at your bind point, not to mention you always lose some experience points every time you die. So if you want to get back some of your XP, ask a cleric for a resurrection. So I'm going to remove one of these spells. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to heal. And under heal, I have resurrection. And of course, I'm going to use the, bit, the, the best one. But at level 12, you get your first resurrection spell. The level 12 resurrection spell just revives your fallen ally. It doesn't really have any other benefit. But... At 47, the spell uh, Resurrection, as it's called, revives a slain ally, restoring 90% of their lost experience. It takes some time for the recently revived to fully recover. So if you die, a cleric can resurrect you and you get 90% of your XP back. A cleric that is a little bit higher level than me will actually have another spell. I think it's, I don't know, 57, 58, something like that, that will give back even more XP. I think the most you get is probably about uh, 96. And finally, I wouldn't be doing a cleric justice if I didn't talk about undead. So... I'm going to right click in the empty slot. We're going to go to damage over time. And you see here, I have damage over time spells called Epitaph of Life, Turning the Unnatural. And at 25, there's Sermon of the Righteous. I also have direct damage for undead starting at level four all the way to 55, like exile undead. Oh, hey, we got some armor that dropped. Flawed plate and legs. Wow, what a treat. Okay, flawed boots. It's an upgrade. I need flawed boots, flawed legs. It's an upgrade. I got two really nice upgrades. Wow, what did I do to deserve that? That is awesome. Oh, hey, I even got a flawed adept's rake. It's a range item. It's going to be way better than this dinky little 10% haste thing. So let me put that over here too. Sure, I don't have a haste thing now, but I will... I will make one. I can make an augment that would give me 40% haste. Not that it's required or important as a uh, priest because you don't do a whole lot of melee fighting, but I can make an aug that would fit in any one of my, like my, my, one of my earrings or, or my veil or something like that if I want to. And not to mention this has mana regen and clairvoyance. So if we're fighting undead, that's zombies, skeletons, 
ghouls, specters, there's all kinds of things that might be undead. Uh, a cleric is really good at fighting undead. They do a lot of damage at a, at a cheap mana cost. So you see mana here is uh, 210 for this spell and it does 946 damage. So let's compare this to the regular direct damage spell. And you see here, okay, this does, this takes up a little bit more mana, just a tiny bit more mana, okay? than this one but look at the damage difference 946 damage compared to just 571 so against undead a cleric is a beast a beast so if you want to solo fight undead you'll do pretty good you even have damage over time spells to fight undead so you could do like a dot on a a ghoul or something and do direct damage on top of that. Something else to note is that a cleric can also summon some things like create item. Clerics can summon food and water. So if you ever find yourself without food and water when you're out adventuring, ask a nice priest and they might be able to summon some for you. But the bread always looks burned. Then we have a summoned utility which is the halo of light that just works as a light source so if you're a human cleric it can come in handy at low levels and then weapons what's this so let's go to level 41 right away if you find yourself without a weapon you can actually create one just by summoning one unfortunately i've been neglecting my summoning uh cast ability but here we go it's a seven damage 29 delay hammer but you get plus five undead bane damage so that means it's going to do plus five more damage against undead so it would do a total of 12 damage against a skeleton a ghoul or any undead creature instead of just seven of course it's temporary so if you were to log out and then log back in the hammer would be gone, but it's it's just one of those things I thought deserved mentioning. Last, I'm going to check auras. Clerics do get auras starting at level 55. That's kind of a spell that's like always there. The aura for this cleric, oop, this guy's attacking us, so let's smack him while I read. Allows your companions to absorb a portion of incoming melee damage as long as they stay inside the area of the aura. So hey, that's that's really nice. Let's do that. And as you see, when you cast an aura it resembles a bard song you'll see it here in the songs window so that's going to be it for my guide on how i play a cleric this isn't the end all be all like you have to play a cleric this way it's just how i play one again there's different ways you can run in half cock charging in and just start fighting things and hope that your mercenary will catch up and you can do some melee damage you can summon your pet to help you out you can blast things with reckoning you can root monsters so they don't get a chance to run away because a lot of times when a monster is wounded it will start running away and in dungeons that could be really bad because when something starts to run away it usually ends up uh at, you know getting other monsters to start beating on you also but mostly the cleric is there to be a healer they can heal and oh let's not forget that they do have some really good buffs too and if you're wondering what buffs are buffs are beneficial spells so i'm going to back up here and i'm going to really quick uh, bring up a buff spell to show you mostly you get hit point buffs if you right click here under hit point buffs and you'll see there's there's things like egoism uh hit point shielding and symbols now shielding is a line of buff spells that you use just for yourself and you'll see spells with yellow a yellow border around them those are spells that only affect you more or less but then you have things like a uh, blessing of temperance that is in purple so let's memorize that one and you see similar to this heal that's also in purple it means it's a group buff so i if i get close to where my mercenary is and i cast this spell it's not only going to land on me but it will land on my tank mercenary as well and it gives us both extra armor and hit points the cleric does get some stat buffs mostly i would say the resistance buffs things like endure poison endure fire and as you get higher level it's like resist fire resist poison resist magic and they will help you to take less damage and stuff against magic if you raise your magic resist 
like on you and your tank, you might be less likely to get charmed if you meet a nasty enchanter mob because they tend to charm you to where you attack your allies. If you find yourself outdoors, it's always good as any kind of caster or priest that you have a mount, a horse, something like that, because if you're outdoors, you can use a mount and as long as you're sitting on that mount, you actually regenerate your mana faster. But indoors, in a place like this, if you do find yourself running out of mana very quickly, you can make a hot button like this that says, you know, tells your group who you're healing, makes you stand up, makes you cast a spell, and then makes you sit down. That way, it's pretty much seamless like this. So I hope you found this video helpful and or informative. I'm probably missing a whole bunch of stuff about clerics and priests, but maybe somebody else will cover that or you can let me know and I can always make a new video again in the future. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you disliked the video, you can leave a dislike. Whether you liked or disliked the video, I'd love for you to leave a comment telling me what I did right or what I did wrong to earn your thumbs up or your thumbs down. If you like to help me and support the channel, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. Most viewers are actually not subscribed. You can also join the channel as a channel member. Channel members get special perks and privileges like a link to join our private Discord server. If YouTube memberships aren't your thing, check out the links below and you'll find the link to my Patreon. Becoming a patron member gives you similar perks, like a link to join the private Discord, as well as all videos being ad-free. Lastly, feel free to leave a super thanks. A super thanks is like a little mini donation to show me that you really appreciate the video. It would help me out a lot because I'm currently in a financial bind. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and a wonderful tomorrow.